Welcome to Joy of Business with host Simone Melissis, a dynamic business leader with a difference. Simone has founded and operated many businesses from a young age and has always done business differently. Today, Simone is the worldwide coordinator of Access Consciousness and travels the world presenting Joy of Business programs using access tools and empowering people to know that they can create business in a different way and make money doing it. Simone Millicis, weekly on Ohm Times Radio. Well, hi, everyone. This is not Simone Millicis. This is another hijack. So I am Rebecca Hulse, the creative producer of Joy of Business, and I have with me my great hijack buddy, Emily Russell, who is the head of marketing for Joy of Business. And we also have another person that is really close to Simone that I'm thrilled that we've managed to... to include in our hijack today, which is Brendan Watt. Hi, everyone. I don't, ha- I don't have a Joy of Business title. I'm just the hijacker. <laughs> you are okay. the hijacker, but you do have an unofficial title as the wonderful contribution and partner to Simone and exactly. the CFO. <laughs> yes, that's me. Hi. Yeah, that's your title. <laughs> So I I just really happy about this conversation. We've been chatting before we hit record on this and and I just love the stories that Brendan has and and I adore hanging out with him too actually. But we do have a subject that we're going to talk about today. We're not just going to chat nilly willy and that subject is the new foundation class. How does it get any better than this? What is the new foundation class? What when is it? <laughs> I said, what is when, it? what, why? Um, I thought you said, I thought what, you said what is, is going it? on? I would have been guessing. Um, well, the new, <laughs> the, new found, the new foundation class is going to be awesome because we've got Gary and Dane rewrite the, the manual for this once a year. Well, it used to be once a year, which has been done this year. But as soon as all this new stuff has come up in access, these new tools and processes, um, they've decided to do another one in uh next month in Houston. So we're going to have a whole new manual for our class in November, which is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And where is your I'm class? Really so you and Simone. Yeah, and tell us where your class is, because a lot of the audience here, too, is, I mean, I think all over the world and in the U.S. So, Well, our house is going to be on the, for, for those of you who don't know Noosa, Noosa is in Queensland, Australia, and it's this beautiful place. Um, and we've actually got a venue on the Noosa River, which is going to be wonderful, especially for me because I have my jet skis there, which means I get to get up, jet ski, and then facilitate. <laughs> that sounds like a very happy facilitator. Exactly. It's a good start to the day. <laughs> Go ahead, Rebecca. Well, I was just thinking, so uh, Brendan, your story with access consciousness is and how you how you got into this all is is very jump straight in. And I like how <laughs> was your first foundation and how did how did you create that? Uh man, it was so weird for me. Um well my first my first experience with access was you know, I was so unhappy. I was I'd been in a relationship for Twelve years that I hated, and and you know, in my life, I was a tiler at the time. I was a tradesman, and my life, I just did not like it. I would wake up every day just unhappy and morose and miserable, and um, and one day I just finally had enough. I was like, this needs to change because I hate myself and I hate my life. And um, a couple of days later, I was at my sister's house reading the newspaper, and I saw this little ad that says, all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory, call Mel. That's all it said. And it, it, was, it was in pink. So it was like two lines in this huge newspaper. And it stood out to me. And I was like, I was like, what? Okay. And I called it. And I called this girl. And she was like, oh, yeah, we do this thing called the bars, you know, and blah, blah, blah. It's 32 points on the head. And it'll change your life and all this. And I was like, Okay. But I also knew that I was asking for something to show up. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I went and saw this girl and she ran my bars and she, you know, ran these processes with the clearing statement and stuff and for an hour, an hour and a half. And I got in my car and I was, for the first time, I sat there, I didn't start my car. I sat there for like five minutes and giggled to myself. I laughed and felt peaceful and, 
and didn't have that place where I hated myself and felt unhappy. Um, it still come back. It still came back over the following months, that place of I hate my life, blah, blah, blah. But every time I got my bars run, it would change. And then I, um, and then I was like, you know, I was getting my bars run once a week for a month or two and my life would get better every time and better every time. So I was like, okay, what is this stuff? What else is there? So I asked this girl and she's like, well, I'm doing a bars class this weekend if you want to come. And I was like, sure. So I went to this bars class and learnt the bars. Um, I learnt the bars and then she said, oh, there's a Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, is coming to Australia next weekend to do a level two and three. And I was like, oh, cool, I'm going to go to that. And she's like, yeah, well, you have to do this other class to get there. So this was a Sunday and the class was starting in five days on a Friday. And I was like, okay, so anyone can do it? And I called this girl and she's like, well, I work all day. You'd have to come at, you'd have to come in the evenings and we'll have to go until midnight to do this class. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. And we did it. We did it from 6 p.m. every night until midnight for four nights. And we actually finished the book on the way to Brisbane to go to this class. So it was just this full-on steam train into access. I did the, the level two and three with Gary, and then three days later I went to a seven-day event in Cairns. So I did this, I did this three, three weeks of just, just I just dived in. I, I knew that my life was changing, and I knew that, that this is what I'd asked for. So I was willing... I also knew that I was willing to do whatever it took to change it. And I hadn't been my whole life until that point. So when that, you know, when that showed up, I just went for it and have been going for it ever I since. Love, I love this story so much. And it just makes me so excited that, like, you, you didn't have all the money in the world in the time. And, and you had your son and you had a job as a tradie and you still just jumped in and you made it work because you were choosing it. And yeah, it, well, it's just, I had, um, it just excites me. I had $10,000 saved up in the bank, you know, and it'd take me a year or whatever to save it. It was all the, it was everything that I took from my, um, 12 year relationship. I had $10,000 saved up. And I spent it all on access in, um, you know, in that first month, knowing that this was going to change my life. And also, you know, I had people around me saying, "You're crazy! Like, what do you want to, what do you want to spend money on that for? And what, why aren't you just happy with what you've got?" And, you know, and everyone, apart from a couple of people, would, you know, would knock me on it and say, "You don't need to do this," and blah blah blah, and were, and were trying to stop me. But because I had this. You know, I had this sense and I had this knowing that this is going to change my life and this is what I've been asking for. I was willing to go for it and do it. And, you know, a lot of people have people like that in their life where where they, you know, they tell you you can't or they, you know, they say that you, you don't need to or you should just be happy with what you've got. Are those people happy with what they've got and do they actually desire for you to have a greater life? So... I don't really have people like that in my life anymore, which is much more enjoyable for me. <laughs> and I'd never even heard that story, Brendan. And what's what's so hard for me to imagine is you as like a person who was miserable and hating their life. Because I think of anyone I know, like you're one of the most like happiest, easygoing, just like no matter what's going on, you're just so present and happy and with people. Like I just can't even imagine how different that must have been. I know, and it's funny though, because it's like, and I, I, I didn't meet a lot of you guys until, like a lot of my close friends in Access, I didn't meet at the start there where I was just, you know, this, I was, it was weird, it was, you know, like thinking of myself back then, like I think it's um, coming up this Christmas, it'll be seven years since I've, since I started, like since I started getting my bars on and to think Back on seven years ago, it's like, it's a, it's just a totally different life. It's a totally yeah. different everything. I mean, nothing's the same. And do you think for you know, a lot of the, people that scares them? Don't you? Th I mean, the people like the friends that were saying, don't go, you don't have to do this. I get that it's not for everyone. Like, not everyone would want everything to change. A lot of people like to stay in their, their unhappy. Well, well, the, the um, I was the bottom scale of this as well like I I knew that I was like the I was like hidden under I was that far down the rabbit hole 
that I thought, you know, I thought life was over at, at 29. But the thing I love about access is if you want to, if you want to, um, have better finances or you want a better relationship or you want to have more ease with your kids or whatever it is, access has the tools to help that. So you don't need to be a pile of shit <laughs> to come to an access class. You, you might want to, you know, you might want to have a better business. We've got tools for that. You might want to have a better relationship. We've got tools for that as well. So even if your life is going great, but you know there's something else and you'd like it to be greater, then Access has that as well. Yeah, I love that about I love the that so time. much. Yeah. yeah. Especially because I was one of those people, too, that didn't – I didn't have a problem. I was – I was creating everything I wanted in my life, and then I found these tools that was just like this, this like, I don't know, turbo booster on it all, and it all just happened like mm. ten times faster, and and it was like hitting the the boost button on your life, and exactly, it, it was just some of the things that excited me so much. So, what are the the new pieces that's coming out that we do know we have we had. I know we have no idea what this new class is going to be like, but we do have one piece that is going to be a definite, which is order and chaos. So this this has been freaking out a lot of people, including myself. This is one of the pieces that has <laughs> drastically changed my life a lot. Oh, good. Some, some people Goody. may have known me as a control freak and as a person that thought she liked rules. Um and it's changed a lot, thanks to you and, and Simone, actually. And I would love to know, like, what is your take on chaos and order, and, and what effect does that have on your life, and what can you do with it, really? Well, if if I look at, um, you know, the, the story I told before about me coming to Access, like, my life, I was, you know, before I started making these different choices, my life was so much order. It was all about keeping this depression in place, and... And, you know, getting up in the morning and the first thing I'd think was how much I hated myself first, how much I hated my life second, and then how shitty a day I was going to have. So I'd already ordered into existence my whole reality, not knowing that the choices I was making was what was creating it. That was something that was going to come later. But, I, you know, my at the time I had a four-year-old son and I was sharing this tiny bedroom with him at my mum's house. And... He'd wake up in the morning and he'd be like, he'd be like, hey, dad, what are we going to do today? You know, and he'd be so excited and I'd be lying there crying and depressed. He was being the chaos. I was being the order. But also the, the demand and the willingness to do whatever it took was the chaos. It was not willing to be, um, not willing to be stopped by anyone and not willing to be in this reality, so to speak. It was willing to do whatever it took and be the question and be the chaos that would change it. It's, we're about and to go we to have break. so much more to talk about, but we're going to go to break, so you'll just have to stay tuned on that. I like that we have some morning music. That's good. <laughs> what if every moment of every day you had more choice, more tools, more allowance of you? What if joy was your priority? If this is the kind of life you'd like to create, you can join Simone Millicis on the Adventure of Living series, a worldwide telecall where every month you can explore different topics using the Access Consciousness tools and processes to change any area of your life you think is not working for you. Business, money, parenting, bodies, relationships, the list goes on. And what if it did not have to? If your life was the Adventure of Living, what would you create it as? For more information and to sign up, Go to accesstheadventureofliving.com. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. 
The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back, everyone. This is not Simone Millicis. This is actually Rebecca Holst, her creative producer. And I have with me today on this awesome hijack two buddies, Emily Russell and Brenton Watt. So when we were we were trying to talk about chaos and order in two minutes before break. And I was rate, being and bad and not reading the Skype chat that was saying Brett coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So we dive into the huge so topic. Like, that works. That works. I know. Of course. So humanoid. We're like, we can do this in two minutes, right? But apparently we still need a bit more. So, Brendan, I'd love to continue what you were saying, if, if well, you can. It's, on... it's a, if you look at the different energies of them both as well, order versus chaos. Now, chaos in this reality is is, um, is defined as being, you know, crazy and being all over the place and being stuff like that but it's like what if that wasn't what if what if what you thought of being all over the place and and you know being chaos and stuff like that was actually your state of being and you've been trying to order it your whole life because this is because that's what this reality tells you to do that you should you know have your eight hours sleep a night you should do this you should eat that you should blah 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 but what is it in your life that you actually desire and what if it wasn't, what if the way that you create from this place wasn't a wrongness? The thing I love about access is you're not wrong for anything. Nothing you do or say is wrong. It's just a choice. And that that was one of the things that definitely kept me there in the start. So I was like, it was the first time in my life that I could actually be not wrong, not make myself wrong, not others make me wrong, not, you know, all of this. There was no none of this wrongness, which is what I done to myself my whole life so yeah there (laughs) I think that too like you mentioned I think my first foundation class as well that was I didn't even realize how hard I was trying to get everything right like everything based on the like the idea that I had to be wrong if I wasn't doing it like everybody else and like you brought up your son and parenting and the order and chaos and I think literally I mean, there's every area of my life has changed with the tools from foundation and I wouldn't give it any of the tools back. I mean, literally for a million dollars and especially in parenting, I think like I was trying so hard to do everything right. The parenting books, like all of those, those ways are so they're ordered. They tell you how you're supposed to do it. And when you're a person that naturally functions from chaos and it's like, and it's not without the, the thing in the conversation that I love with the order and chaos is that they're, they're the organization is part of chaos, not like just a written yeah. structure that can't change, but the organization. Because if you have kids, like there's a certain organization to getting them ready for school and getting their lunches, and but not with the order involved, like it creates so such a difference. Yeah, exactly. I mean, pa- packing Nash's lunch, I asked him, "Hey, what would you ha- what would you like for lunch today?" Because I never used to do that. It would be like, okay, so he needs a sandwich, he needs this piece of pr- fruit, he needs a drink, he needs a blah blah blah. It was never, "Hey, Nash, what would your body actually desire?" Because I did the same thing. I read all the parenting books and did that at the start. And the thing that I realized with parenting books was if you didn't do it that way, the way they tell you to, you were wrong. But once again, that's how this reality functions with a lot of things. Well, with everything is if you don't do it this way, you're wrong. Or if you're not right, you're wrong. And it's always this thing about bringing you back into judgment of yourself. You're either right or wrong, but being right is still a judgment. So the I would say the biggest gift that I got out of foundation and my you know, and and these early classes in access was I started to judge myself less. I mean, it took me years to actually get to a place where I could go, you know, I could go days without thinking I was pathetic or not judging myself at all. And it was weird. I'd be like, Wow, this and that was the different space that it gave me. It's like what if what if you didn't have to get up and judge yourself ever again? 
That would be different. <laughs> that would be really different. A lot different. That would be. You, you <laughs> might actually, you might actually enjoy yourself. Crazy idea. <laughs> I but I rem- I remember first hearing that like an like an act like that's one of the things we talk about most in access is judgment because it does it it it's what limits you in every area of your life and I remember first hearing that though and thinking I don't think I really judge myself and here I was <laughs> trying to get everything perfect and everything right and I didn't get what a loop I was in because it's so normal in our society like I just thought that's the way you lived like I didn't even get that that was judgment at first if that makes any sense at all. Oh, it makes total sense, and that's um, and you said it there was in, it's so normal, but that's what people get so used to normal. It's like, well, this is normal. That's normal life. Does it actually for anyone listening? It, does it actually work for you, or would you like to have a bit more chaos? Would you like to do things that you've never done before? Would you like to actually wake up every day and live, no matter what that looks like? Like living doesn't have to mean. Oh, cool, I have to go and spend all my money and take access classes, or I have to go and spend all my money and go on this trip around the world. It's like, what if what if living was just getting up every day and looking at, okay, cool, what am I going to create today? What else can I add to my life rather than, well, I've got this. I mean, I remember when, um, when Nash was born, and, and my friends at the time around me were having kids as well, and everyone was like, oh, well, I've had my fun. It's time to settle down now. And I was like, what? But that was that's the point of view that most people take, and especially parents is like, you know, well we've done our, you know, we've we've done our childhood stuff, and we've done our, you know, twenties, and we've had fun, and we've we've been on a holiday, or we've done this. Now we've got kids, and it's all about them. And so, what if your life was all about you? And talk about being something that that in this reality is considered selfish, right? Yeah. And can, exactly. can you talk but, about that, like what choosing for you actually creates for everyone in your life? Because that's totally mis, like, misread in this reality, I think. <laughs> well, for me, for, I mean, with Nash, for example, he's 11 now. And, and, you know, I choose for me always, but I always include him. He's my son. And, you know, and I, com- I made a commitment to him the day he was born. It was like, you know, I'm your dad and I'll be here for you. So I've always included him in in every choice I've made, but I've also demanded more of me every day and I've also chosen for me every day. So what does that teach him? Does it teach him that that he has to choose what other people choose or does it teach him that he can actually choose for himself? And one of the things I got years and years ago was if I actually desired him to have, you know, to have this life where he could choose for him and be him and not judge himself and create money and, you know, whatever it is that he'd like to choose, I'd have to choose it too. Because if I'm, if I'm trying to teach him about money, but I'm also not willing to change my money situation, what is that showing him? If I'm not willing to get up in the morning and, and, you know, choose more and be me, but I'm asking him to be more of him, what is that showing him? So I looked at, okay, cool. If I'm going to show him how to do it, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to choose this for myself you know so I used him uh, he was a massive inspiration to me you know I used him as a um, as my you know as my inspiration really it was like wow I've got this kid here who looks up to me big time I'm going to fucking step up here and I'm going to choose more and I shouldn't have swore that and I'm bad I've hijacked the radio though we've hijacked (laughs) it (laughs) Well, how how did your relationship love- change with him after you? Sorry, Rebecca. After you made those changes, go for it. Well, um, I just thought, you know, I saw him start to show up a lot more of of him. He was always like he was such a happy kid, but um, w- when I left his mum, like he'd go from, you know, we had shared custody, so he'd go from here one week to his mum's one week, and it was a completely different thing. So he'd go from here where I was changing constantly. Like I was in this, I was on a roller coaster, especially um, it felt like it more in the first year because I had so much stuff that I built up and built up over years and years and years that was all starting to go away. So it was like I went from a standing start to a to this freight train. So he'd go from, 
you know, this constant change to his mum's house where things didn't change and stuff. So he was in this place at the start where it was kind of like a tug of war. It was a push and pull and he'd be like, I can have this and then he'd, oh, but I can't have this, but I, oh, I could have that, but I can't have that. And, you know, and now he's, I mean, he's been living with us for the last 10 months. He doesn't, he doesn't see his mum anymore. He doesn't desire to, but his life has changed big time. He's such a, he's an amazing kid. And I mean, to have the, to, to have the start that he's had now, it's just, I'm so grateful for Actus. If, if it was just for that, I'd be grateful. And we've got a break in two minutes. I like this. I'm reading the Skype thread. This is good. <laughs> I just love this. And, I mean, I know Nash. He is an epic kid. He's great. He always mm. just kind of – he knows what works for him and, and what he wants, and he's so brilliant at choosing, which – I just think it is awesome. And, hey, because Brendan mentioned the hijack and we're having so much fun, I just want to do a quick little shout-out to give us feedback. Do you like these hijacks? Is there someone else you would like to see host a hijack? Are you sick of Emily and I? Do you love this? What, what are you looking for? What other topics <laughs> do you want to, to, to do? Don't worry. That is that is not a trap. It's not a trick question. <laughs> It is actually not a trick question, and Brendan is really good at identifying those now, so he can be your true verification on that. Uh, because we we always want to know. I mean, we do those pre-records, and sometimes we hear from the people that are listening, and, and sometimes we don't. And it's it's nice to know that we're talking to you, and that you do want to hear from us, and you are loving this show. So, Emily, we have an email address that you can email, right? It is ohmtimes at accessjoyofbusiness.com. Yep. There we go. Ohmtimes at accessjoyofbusiness.com. Tell us you're a real person and that you love the show. Because we would love to know. We would love to know who you are, too. So seeing as we have about 30 seconds before the next break, Brendan, can we just do a little quick fire on what are your two favorite questions? I hear the, I hear the warning music. Yeah, How about we do good. it after I do. the break? <laughs> Exactly. He After has break, a minute to a think about it. Hangout. Don't go away. We have two questions for you by Brendan Watt coming up. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Radio Namaste leads you down the yellow brick road into portals of consciousness with the blue collar goddess as your host. Interviews with humans who could be famous or just popular, and answers to everything are on the agenda. Tune into Om Times Radio and drop in on Thursdays at 3 Eastern. It's a different brand of enlightenment. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. What if your job, your life, and your business didn't have to look or feel like anyone else's around you? The joy of business tools and classes aren't about following a set path to success. They are a treasure box of questions, tools, and resources for you to expand what you already know about business and take the leap into more possibilities. Learn more about the Access Joy of Business 101 class by going to accessjoyofbusiness.com forward slash 101. What do you know that could change your business and the world? AccessJoyOfBusiness.com forward slash 101. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back, everyone. This is not Simone Millicent. Sorry, it's not. This is Rebecca Holst, and we are hijacking the Joy of Business show. And I have two buddies here with me today for this hijack. I have Emily Russell, and I have Brendan Watt. And now I tried to do a little bit of a question ambush on on Brendan before the break, 
but the brake caught up on me, so instead he got lots of time to prepare. I just wanted to know a couple of tools that Brendan particularly loved from the foundation that he loves to use that we could give you. Well, you know, it's funny as well is because <laughs> I would have done that. I would have done that years ago. I would have been like, okay, cool. I've got like three minutes of ads. Now I can prepare what I'm going to say. I was looking at emails and doing other things. I wasn't even thinking about it. But <laughs> one of the things, you know, one of the things I always used to try to do was prepare my life. I was look at, okay, how am I going to do this? And I'd do everything before I even got to do it. What if you didn't have to have that in your life? And what if, what if you could be more spontaneous and live more in 10 seconds of choice? Like, okay, what now? What now? What now? What now? I mean, which is how a lot of us live our lives these days. It's like, we, we, we have that much going on that it's like, what next? What next? What next? But, um, with the questions, I mean, the, the, the most used question at the start for me was who does this belong to? Because I didn't get that. A, how aware I was of what was going on. And I thought all this depression and um, sadness and everything that was, you know, that was showing up back then was all mine. That it was all this, well, must be all me because I'm feeling it every day. I'm like, I'm the one waking up in the morning feeling like shit. Who else is it? Who else is it going to belong to? But I started asking this question and, and the more I asked it, the more I realized that none of it was mine. You know, that I was aware and that I am aware and that I, I was aware of what's, everything going on around me. So if I had a, if I had a next door neighbour who was having a bad day, I was aware of that. If I had, you know, someone in my family or a friend who was sad, I was aware of that. So the more I started asking, who does this belong to, and it would start going away, the more I realised that, wow, maybe I'm not as screwed up, up as I thought I was. So that was a question that I'd use constantly. Um, and another question I got at the start was, how does it get any better than this? So rather than, you know, usually what I'd learned from throughout life was, well, this is good or this sucks or this is blah, blah, blah. And you hear so many people, like I hear it a lot now is, well, it doesn't get any better than that. And it's a very Australian thing as well. It's like, oh, it doesn't get any better than that, does it, mate? But it's like, what if you asked, how does it get any better than this? And you could actually have, even even for the crappy things that are showing up in your life, wow, how's it get any better than this? And allow the universe to actually contribute to you as well. Questions will always create your life, not conclusions, not, well, this is how it is. They will always bring you to a stop, but a question will always, um, it will always offer another possibility. If you're in constant question, you can never come to a conclusion and you can never stop. So I just keep asking questions, whatever it is. And but that's my favorite I love, that you brought, I love that you brought it up too because, okay, the access in the foundation and in the bar class, the tools that we talk about and like the tips, a lot of, most of them, a lot of them are questions, right? And yeah. in this reality, like I've had some people be like, most mostly the purpose of a question is for an answer in this reality. And these questions and the tools and the way you use them is not for an answer. It's for awareness and opening up possibilities like you're talking about. But can you talk about that for someone who doesn't quite get how questions work? Yeah. Well, <coughs> excuse me. Was <coughs> Well, a lot of people, like you said, are looking for an answer because that's what you've been taught. That's what school is all about. School is all about, okay, so if I ask this, what's the answer to it? Whereas what we're looking at is if I ask this question, what other possibilities can show up? Like if I ask, how does it get any better than this? How can I linear? How can I make that linear? It's not how does it get any better than this? Oh well, this could happen, or this could happen, or this could happen. But what if you could give up having this, you know, having control over everything and actually let the universe contribute to you? The more I did that, and the and the reason I say all of these things is because I've done them all. I've tried everything. with Everything that I talk about, I've tried and I've done and it's worked. So one of the things I like to be is pragmatic. If it works, I do it. If it doesn't, what's the point? So I, you know, would, I'd ask the universe, hey, universe, you know, can you contribute to me here? And it would, and it would, and it would. And it's like... 
I get for most people it sounds weird because they want to be in total control of these things. But it's like, what if you could actually have assistance from the universe? I love that. And that is such a, like, it's one of those things that we don't seem to think about a lot, like, that the universe is actually here to contribute to you. It's actually some things that I read maybe in, like, my first year of, of access classes where I found something where Gary had said, the universe hasn't dropped the crane on your head. It actually desires you here. And I was like, that's so true. The universe hasn't attempt, had any attempt to kill me in the years that I've been alive. Like, it hasn't dropped a train on my head. It hasn't run a bus over me. I haven't been in a plane crash or anything like that. Like, it truly desires that I'm here. I was like, wow, that's really yeah, awesome. Well, like, I mean, yeah, exactly. And people have been doing it for, you know, it's, it goes back thousands and hundreds of thousands of years, but thousands of years where it's documented, where people, you know, ask God and ask whatever it is for them to contribute to them. And it's like, where did we become this place where it's so, I mean, especially where I grew up in the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia, which is so like small life syndrome of magnitude, where it's like, well, you go to school and you then you get a job as a tradesman or a whatever it is and then you have a kid and then you get married and then you retire at 65 with your whatever it is and then you go on a holiday around Australia with a caravan and then you die but that's the way that I saw everyone living their lives and it was because that was what was shown to them it wasn't because they didn't desire more but it was because they hadn't been told there was more available there is more available out there and it's you know the the thing with access is it's to get for you what it is that works for you in your life. It's not do what Brendan did or do what Rebecca did or Emily did or Simone did. It's what is it that you'd like to have extra of in your life or what more would you like to have and go for that and don't let anyone tell you you can't have it because we have tools to create it and it's all based on your choice. Which is a, which was another thing that changed my life in the beginning was when I heard I, I heard Gary or Dane say that um, where you are where you're at in your life today is is um, is due to all of the choices you've made up until now. So I was like, wow. So every everything I've created was based on my choices. My choices had created my reality. So if once I got that, I realized, well, if I've, if I've made these choices and created this shitty life, then why couldn't I just make more choices? And that's what I did. I started making different choices every day based on awareness of what choices had created in the past. So I knew that if I chose this, these are the things that had been showing up for me in the past. So what if I chose something completely different? And that's what I did. And different things started showing up. So I'd choose these random things. Like I would just, I would, I completely did this 180 turn. I was like, well, none of that worked in the past, so I'm doing something different for everything. And, I mean, my life changed at this crazy speed. I mean, it it still spins me out to where I'm at, to where I'm at now. I saw this thing on Facebook um, this morning. It was a, you know, how they put those things up of, this was you three years ago. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. even that, I looked at that and I was like, holy shit, my life has changed so much since then. But that's that's what's exciting for me is change in my life and every day being different and knowing I also have a knowing now that that because I'm willing to keep moving forward and because I'm willing to use these tools and choose more every day, I know my life's gonna get better every day. So I don't wake up wondering. I wake up knowing and going, Yeah, I'm if if there's something in life I desire, I know I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get it. But how many of you have not been shown that you can do that when you can? There is a way that you can have anything you desire in life. Even if you're right now listening to this and you're going, well, it's all good for you to say this, but I've got no money and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I've been there. I know about that. Trust me. Like I've had, I I know about all that stuff. And I also know that you can do it. You just have to choose something different and you have to make a demand in your life that it can show up. What the hell do I need to choose today for that to happen? 
So, Brendan, take, like, your money situation. What were some of the first few choices, like the small things that you started to change right away that has now, like, created, every like, the huge change in that one area? Well, I did no money for years when I started Access. It was awesome. Um, you know, like I said, I spent that money that I had, and, and then I just, you know, I had no money in the bank. And I was, I'd lived day to day my whole life. I knew, I knew how to do it. I knew what it was like. It was like, oh shit, where am I getting money for milk today, or where am I getting money for food today, or petrol today? Like, but I also knew it would show up. Whenever I needed petrol, somehow I created the money, but I wasn't willing to create past day to day living until you know using these tools and looking at you know and I I spent time around people with money and I looked at okay what would I like my what would I actually like to have in my life you know and I I started you know I remember um looking at the way Gary and Dane dressed and I was like you know and I'd dressed in this cheap polyester shit and I didn't have money for anything else but I watched them walk in and they'd always be dressed so nice and be like wow I'd like to look like that. You know, I'd like to have those clothes. So, and I'd look at, wow, that's a nice car. I'd like to have things like that. And I started looking at what I'd like to add to my life, but not what I didn't have in it. Not, well, I'd like to have that, but I could never have it. I'd like to have that. So now what's it going to take for me to earn more money? And I did, you know, we talk about this thing, well, we've got one minute left. We'll talk about the tools I've used to get out of money because, I, I mean, I was broke for for 30 years of my life, so I know I know what tools I've used. So I'd love to share those. But after the break, cliffhanger. <laughs> I love the tease. Well, I mean, we do have a couple more, one more minute, and I would love to invite you to the cost. Did you know you can meet Brendan in person and, and you can come fly to Australia. You can, to this terrible country, to this beautiful beach, to this wonderful house, and it won't be any fun, and there won't be jet skis, and there won't be change, and there won't be new possibilities for your life. But, oh, wait, that's not true. There will be. So Maybe you I should go stop to telling access. everyone. Oh, sorry. You say the link What you quick. like about it? I know. No, so accessdoorbusiness.com <laughs> forward slash foundation new stuff, and you can see more about it. You're invited. Maybe it's time to do a yummy holiday. A great trip. We'll see you on this cliffhanger in the next segment. What if there were an easy way to let go of all the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that keep you stuck in your head without any effort? Join the founder of Access Consciousness, Gary Douglas, and co-creator, Dr. Dane here, for a one-of-a-kind global class to learn the bars, a process that effortlessly and easily releases the electromagnetic charge of what holds the thoughts, feelings, and emotions in your body. Participate live in Houston, Texas, or via live stream on October 7th. Access bars have helped tens of thousands of people change many aspects of their life. Are you ready for a brain reset? Visit globalbars.com. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Join Elliot Jolish. The Business Therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jollish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jollish Hour. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM.
Welcome back, everyone, to the last segment of this very fun fat hijack with Brendan and Emily and myself, Rebecca. So we left on a super cliffhanger with a slightly rushed invitation to join us in the wonderful Noosa, Australia, for this awesome class that Simone and Brendan are going to be facilitators. But if you can't wait that long, there's also something that's happening next week, or this week, depending on when this is aired, Emily, that I think is absolutely amazing. Brendan, do you want to tell them what it is? Are we talking about a foundation class? We are. The one in oh, cool. Houston. Yes. Global bar. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And you can get on and live stream it. It's so easy. It's, you know, you, you can do it on your TV or your computer and you get on and live stream this class. It's with Gary and Dane. And it's like I said, it's this foundation class. So it's this, it's, it's the tools that'll, that'll just start breaking down those walls that you, that you think you have in front of you and give you different choices in your life that you can, you know, start having whatever it is that you desire that's going to, that's going to create change for you. But it's all about you. Access is all about creating what's going to create more for you, which is why I love it. Us too. And if you need that bonus class beforehand, which is the, the magic class that started Brendan on this wild and crazy journey. And oh, yeah, is the bars. It for the foundation. <laughs> this is the first bars class that Gary and Jane have facilitated together. And it's live streamed all around the world and translated into, I think, 15 languages. And there's pods you can attend. And it, there's just so much going on that I am, I'm just, I'm really excited to be a part of it. And it all happened so quickly that we put this class together. So if you just can't wait or you're, you're not in the mood to travel down to Noosa, then I, <laughs> live streaming these classes would be amazing. You can go to five days of change.com to look at more about that if you're interested. Gary has a quote, um, he has a quote somewhere. And I think it goes like this is, two things that will change your life access bars and choice and that sums it up for me that's exactly Pretty what has does. changed my life is the bars you know got me to to realize that it, it kind of started unlocking all the crap that i'd you know stored away and all the points of view i had about all these different things and then realizing that my choice created my life that that was that started me on you know, knowing that I could change anything. And like I said in that quote was, I forget how it went, um, when I realized I no, could change... No, you said it pretty I, much right. No, I'm t I meant the quote I said where, on our thing where <laughs> I said, when I, real when I realized I could change anything, that's exactly what I did. Well, that's what, that's what got me to see that was my choice created it. So if I can choose this to create crap, I can obviously choose this to not create crap. So... So there. Exactly. I love it. So we left on a little bit of a cliffhanger before, and, and it gave you more so-called time to prepare, which, which yeah, is Yeah, I've sure been preparing good. You've been preparing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know me so well. I do. And do you know what's really funny is I've forgotten the question that we were going to ask I, you. I don't. I don't. See, I'm good. It was on money. It was about how I started changing my money. And, I mean, Aha. I was I was having a giggle in the break because, I mean, I had, you know, I was still, I don't know, 18 months or two years after starting Access, you know, I was still thinking I had a money problem. I still, that was an area of my, cha my life where I was not willing to change yet. I was doing pathetic with money. And I moved in with Simone. And for you guys who know Simone, I mean, you know what she's like. Sit from six o'clock in the morning when she gets up until when she goes to bed at night, she is creating. That girl is just nonstop. So I'm doing this. Well, I can't make money and blah blah blah, and and she's just so. So I don't know how I lasted at the start living with her. That was funny, but um, you know, I there's a thing we talk about in access the ten percent account, and I did this. Uh, five or six times, you know, and I get up to two, I put, you put 10% away of everything you earn into a separate account and you don't touch it. And I was like, why would I do that? Like, isn't the purpose of money to spend it? Why else would I have it? Hence my day-to-day -day living. 
And I'd do it for a couple of weeks and, you know, I'd have some money in there and then I'd spend it and then I'd do it again and I'd spend it. And my money situation wasn't changing until one day I said, I actually said to Simone, look, can you hold this money for me and don't give it to me as much as I ask you for it or beg you for it, don't give it to me. And I started giving her my 10% until I got to a place where I had no desire to spend it anymore. And I've been building and building on it for, for years now and still have no desire to spend it, and more money shows up in my life. So that was definitely my number one. Um, that was my number one t- tool to um, to start creating money because I realised that money was fun to actually have, not just to spend. All right. So I next area of your life, I want to know how you changed um, with relationship. Because then we can talk about Simone a bit too. But like, what you started to change in that area of your life? Because so many well, people we look did at hi- that area. We did hijack her show, so we can talk about it. Um, <laughs> we we did we did um, this for years at the start of our relationship. We were like, no, we're not in a relationship. We're just like hanging out, and you know, we just like to hang out with each other and blah blah blah. And uh, my mum was over one. We were living together and we were still saying, we're not in relationship. No, we're not in relationship because neither of us was willing to actually commit to that. You know, we were always looking for the, we'd, we'd had abusive relationships in the past. So that's what we saw relationship as. We were always looking for the, for the everything's going great and then the slam in the back of the head. You know, so it was, we, we were always, we thought if we could keep out of relationship then it would work. As soon as we got into a relationship, it wouldn't. So my mum was here one day and she was like, okay, so if you guys, you, what I see you guys have is everything I want. So, and you're saying you're not in relationship. So what is this? We started to look at it. And I mean, our relationship is something that we look at every day and we create every day. We don't say, okay, we're in relationship. Let's, now we're together. Let's grow old together. We look at what can we create together? Is this working for us today? So it's a, it's a constant creation. It's not a decision of this is what we're in. Next. <laughs> We've only got five minutes. <laughs> How about body? Something that changed body. your body. Mm. Well, getting out of judgment was the was great. I mean, how many how many people do you know that don't judge their body that actually enjoy it and get up and can look in the mirror and go, wow. I love my body. It looks great. You know, I, I, I always judge my body. It was always, you know, that there's not this, there's not that, and blah, blah, blah. And it was never about this joy of having it. So get out of judgment. It, the, the tool I would say for that would be next time you go to judge yourself for anything, stop. Realize that judgment is not a creation. Judgment will not create every, anything. If you look at your your stomach, for instance, and say, my stomach's too fat, Is that does that actually change it or does that make it worse? So look at your body and go, wow, I love my body and if there's parts of your body you'd like to change, question, what would it take to change this? So stop yourself when you go to judgment and go into question. Next. Okay, next one, friends and family. What's changed in that area and what tools did you use to change it? <laughs> well, I mean... Family's an interesting one because we're told, you know, that we should love our family, you know, it's all we have and there's all these things around family, but most people's families judge the hell out of them, don't actually desire them, for them to have more, don't encourage them to to spread their wings and soar and create everything it is that they desire, they try and hold you back. So realize that if you have that in your family, doesn't mean you need to kick your family out or get rid of them, but realize that, that if they have judgments of you, they mean nothing. They're judgments. So realize, okay, cool. My, my my father thinks I can't do this. Do it anyway. Do what works for you. And then you, if your family sticks around, they stick around. Friends, the same thing. I mean, I had, so, I don't have, um, I don't think, I don't have one friend now that I had back when I started, like before I started Access. They all left. They all thought I was, you know, crazy and I was into this weird shit and, Stuff. So were they actually friends? No. So, you know, choose people in your life that don't judge you. If you're going to have a friend in your life, what if, what if, um, you know, your your prerequisite for a friend was no judgment? 
If I have a friend in my life, they don't judge me. If they're going to judge me, they're no longer a friend. So, you know, I have some, I have rules when it comes to friendship. <laughs> Great rules. And I mean, the friends that you have now that you travel around the world with and have I love them. I have the best friends ever. I know, and I love right? it. They're all on different <laughs> planets. So, uh, they're all on different planets, countries. So I can call anyone at any time if I want to talk to someone. It's awesome. I love it. I love this little quick little interview too, the 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 flash questions. So if you want yeah. to meet meet this wonderful man that Simone and Emily and myself adore and come to wonderful Australia in the summer and hey, maybe you want to skip Thanksgiving or the crazy holiday period. There's a whole lot of classes in Australia at the end of the year. But whatever you do, we just love that you choose. And that if you want more access in your life, go for it. It is amazing, and it is something that has been such a contribution. So that link again to go and discover the foundation is accessjoyofbusiness.com forward slash foundation NUSA. Brendan, any last minute words before we wrap this up? No, uh, just just please know to anyone who's listening, if there's something that you desire to change, it is possible. Like I said, I've done it, so I know it. So I hope you got something out of this, and thank you for letting me hijack the show with you. You're welcome, Brendan. Thanks, thank everyone, for, for this up. awesome um, time hijack. Rebecca, Emily, Brendan, you're a host. See you next week.